can you reference to a constructor while using method references we can reference to static in a method instead method using the particular object we can do that no, and we can in the terms of methods yes we can do either it is static or non static method but can you do with the same with the constructor as well yes yes we can do with the constructor also with oh. the help of uh, this term is yes, we we, do, we we can what we not mention that uh, constructor uh, method like so we can we can use that constructor in method references also in the me- in the case of method references like uh, in the case of method we give the method name so in the case of constructor what you will give suppose you need to store password so what type of data type you will choose to store password password will be stored as a binary data so blob uh, i can use because it will be having a, a var care or blob is almost uh, we can use because it should have the encrypted data type so binary data is not understandable by the by any of the unauthorized person so i can use blob or uh, var care encrypted uh, data we can store Okay, so in Spring, what is dispatcher servlet? Ah, uh, dispatcher servlet in a Spring. Okay, I will tell you that dispatcher is a front controller in a Spring web application. It used to control web application and the web rest services in a, a Spring Boot. It it's a traditionally actually we can say uh, where means a, it's a con- controller. It's in a, a Spring MVC. We have a dispatcher servlet dot XML files. Then uh, uh, we can uh, use now uh, in a traditional way. Mm-hmm. Just we have to provide our dispatcher name. For example, Spring Framework, which is an is belong to dispatcher in a, our web dot XML file. It send uh, all the HTTP request uh, and del- uh, it control. Uh, it receive all the HTTP con- request and delegate them to the controller before uh, in servlet is register with the XML files in previous servlet. Then since uh, new we can since new version of api we can register servlet programmatically in servlet container in initializer i think mm. i don't know the number exactly but we can do it programmatically then uh, just we have to provide uh, in a spring boot we have to provide a spring starter boot web api is just contains a uh, dispatcher automatically in it just spring boot con- auto configure register and auto configure the dispatcher automatically means with the help of this api in a form file So in a Spring Boot, no need to configure the dispatcher in a web root XML. Just with the help of this API, you can configure automatically in our configuration file. Can you tell me what is aggregation? Aggregation means tight coupling, right? Tight coupling has a relationship, you can say. Suppose you are working on some branch, okay? Some you are fixing some bug, and uh, yeah. you added some code in. So what you will do? You will take. create a new branch pull code from repository remote repository and create a new branch locally and work on that and then push your code okay commit yeah. your code and then push your code but before committing your code let's say your teammate was working on the same branch same project sorry and uh, uh-huh. he was fixing some other issue okay yeah. and uh, he pushed i mean before you so what you will do in that scenario how you will yeah. make sure that uh, the latest master branch will have your changes and his changes as well okay so let's say let's say if we both are using or uh, doing changes on the same file okay so let's say for then let's say i pull the code okay so if i get some conflict okay so what we can do okay so either i can call him and let's say on let's say meeting we can discuss okay let's say what are your things that what is mine and uh, we can use some let's say third party let's code free as well so that uh, we can see let's say what the code he added and what is the currently issue and if there is no conflict then i can simply push my code as well maybe he is working in another shift he is not online just committed his code after that you are working on different shift maybe in some other scenario in that scenario yeah i don't have any idea what i can do in that scenario what you will do before pushing your code you will pull mm-hmm. Uh, pull from the master, pull changes from the master. So whatever new changes the master has currently will be pulled in your branch, and then you can push your code. Okay, that is one thing. So there are two things. The other other thing is Git staging. So what is Git? Yes. Yeah. What is Git staging? Staging means the same thing. Your branch will be similar to the current branch. So whatever changes are new in the master branch in the report. remote repository will will be will will come to your branch will add to your branch so you will your branch will have the latest code latest code means your friends your colleagues code as well and then you can mm-hmm. make changes in that uh, code in your local repository and then push your code 
So everything will up to date and there will be no conflict. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So what type of databases you have used? In Most of the time I have worked with the uh, Postgres database. Most of the time. But recently I am interacting with Oracle as well. But most of the time I have used the Postgres SQL database. And for this period of time I used the around two years with the MongoDB as well. MongoDB, yeah, MongoDB as a database. So what do you prefer? Uh, in which database uh, you are Mimis most comfortable? There is no preference as such me because I have written the functions in Oracle or stored procedure or functions and queries in Postgres as well. And uh, no, I have no preference as such. Uh, most of the time I was work with Postgres as well. So because of that, I'm all, I could be less uh, inclined towards that. But other than that, I have no preference as such. Because I have worked with the various uh, databases. So sometimes earlier uh, there was a DB2 in the current project. We migrated to Oracle. So for a moment of time, I was with the DB2. So kind of I work so no preference as such from my side. Okay, so what are the lambdas? Yeah, lambda is uh, nothing but make it will make the functional interface calling easy, right? Using lambda, so automatically it create the implementer for our functional interface. Let's say uh, like a runnable interface we have, like it has only one method run, right? Okay. So using lambda, we don't need to write full code for our. Uh, so Lambda makes the functional interface implementation easy. And what are the other features you use Java while coding? We are used uh, Lambda function and uh, default methods in your uh, interfaces and then uh, method references and then uh, mainly we use the stream. Yeah, these are the basic things we are used as part of Java 8. We also used uh, Enhanced Script Checking in Java 11 or something. Uh, Java 11 or Java 13, I don't remember. There is a something called Enhanced Statement where you can use uh, Lambda expression. Enhanced for function. loop, you mean? Enhanced for loop, even you have Enhanced Switch Statement. You can write, usually we have switch case and then you have the statements and then break statements. Yeah. But in the in the case of enhanced switch, uh, you can directly write in one line statement like case, string, colon, you write your uh, lambda function, arrow mark function, and then you write your expression. That's it. That kind of case statement we have used it. Have you used any spring data or JPA? Uh, that's what I say, right? Uh, our current application doesn't hit your database directly. It, we have underlying services. But I know that we can use Hibernate JPA as your application or you have an inbuilt H2 database. That way you can configure database in your Spring Boot application by means of that repository uh, what is that annotation. And uh, you configure your database data things in the application properties, file entries like dialog username, password, all those things you configure it in application the properties. And uh, regarding the crude operation, you create a class, repository class by maintaining, uh, by mentioning at repository annotation and then extends your crude, uh, crude, Good, uh, yeah. crude operations. Your order. Crude yeah. operations, I don't know. Yeah. So in between, we have all the find all, find, uh, delete, everything will be there. Save. So what are the wrapper classes in Java? Yeah, like a string integer, not an int integer. Yeah. What and is the use of like that? A, actually, uh, like a primitive data types we have, right? The primitive data types, it won't have a, a null value, actually. So initial value itself, for example, int is zero. So like that, the initial value, uh, it is not a null. So uh, for example, I'm going to create on map. So in this case, right, uh, what is the key is, right? Preferred key is primitive type only because primitive type, it won't change even though it is it doesn't have any null. Even the primitive types, right, uh, we could not able to change uh, after assigning, right? So that, that is not a, like a proper thing. So but if you are going with a wrapper class or else any other uh, objects, so I'm going to create by instead of uh, primitive type, I'm going to create on map with the objects, primitive type, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, wrapper class or else it's a customized object, right? It is like a, uh, might be the value we, we can change anytime also, right? So that that is the not right way. But wrapper class is also null is there, right? So it should uh, handle a few cases. So that's what wrapper class will do. In Spring Boot, what is yeah. application context? Application context will application context is a notation which will be used in the application startup. So it will contain uh, libraries which we stored in the pom.xml. While starting up of application, it, it will loads all uh, the data and artifacts along with it, and also the application server also. And how it is different from Bean Factory? Application context and the Bean Factory. Yeah. Bean Factory is something uh, like uh, it will create, uh, it will it, it is based on the service flow. So it is like uh, for each service, we will create a bean. It is like uh, application, one is like application layer, one other one is like a service layer. Apart from that, it is like bean is like something of, of uh, managed by a Spring container. Both are uh, managed by Spring container. It is like a service layer implementation we will use bean. 
uh, two constructor have not have a same being like so there are two methods in executor service submit and execute what is the difference between these two methods so once we submit then so executor service dot submit okay so once like we have submitted it we cannot uh, it will so execute method basically okay there is no return type into it and then once we submit it then it should i think return something submit so it will return something always submit when we execute of yeah service dot submit whenever we do this it it should return something right in in submit most of the time and i think execute there is not no return type at all that is the main thing basically i think this submit method accepts runnable and callable task as well while execute only accept runnable it will return that it return something yeah i i as far as i remember it is returning future object only yeah but execute doesn't return anything uh, it is void only 